Hello everyone, today we're gonna to cut open a No Bull shoe. No Bulls are some of the most popular shoes that are out there. I've had a pair for, ever since they came out with the original version, which is probably about four or five years now. But we're gonna cut open a pair, see what's inside, see what it's all about. So here's the layout. These are a pair of Noble shoes. Shout out to my buddy Corey for letting me cut his open. These are an old pair that he no longer wears. I didn't want to cope, cut open my pair because I still wear mine. I never train in these. I actually just wear these to walk around. In my opinion, Nobles aren't the most comfortable shoe to train in. I prefer Nanos, but I do know that a lot of people love Nobles. In fact, they're my wife's favorite shoe. They're my, some of my buddy's favorite shoes. I see them all over. Everybody likes them. So I wanted to figure out why are they so dang expensive? This has to be the question you're asking yourself is why are Nobles so expensive? Because if you go to buy a pair, you realize very quickly that they're more expensive than say a Metcon or a Nano or some of those other shoes. I don't know why they're so expensive. It could just be because of the name. It's a sweet name and they have unique products and they're not running as much volume as Nike and Reebok are. Um, you know, they're more of a boutique shoe company. They're also using this super fabric right here, um, but they really only have a couple shoe styles. They have these, which these are pretty much the same. This is the first version. This is the second version. For those that are out there, maybe shopping for these second hand, the way you can tell if they're the first or the second, first ones have a different bottom than the second ones. Other than that, there's definitely some changes that were made, but overall, that's the difference. But they also make they're knit runners, which I love. We've done a review video on those. I love these things. I don't run in them either. I'll run in them sometimes, but I mainly just wear them because I think they're a cool looking shoe. Um, and then they have like a high top too, some weightlifters. But these are really their creme de la creme. These are the ones they're known for. These are the ones that they're most popular. And so what I want to do is I want to cut them in half and I want to see, you know, what kind of is, is used in the insole, what's used in the outsole, you know, what kind of foam, are they using any, you know, high density, low density foam, are they using any, you know, shanks or shock absorbers, different things like that. So we can kind of figure out why they're so expensive or if they're just a normal built shoe and really you're just paying for the look and the name, which is fine because I have stuff like that too. Okay, obviously I bought these and these. Okay, so let's get into it. The way I'm gonna do this, just so you know, this is the first shoe I've ever cut in half. If this video is popular enough, we'll probably cut open a Metcon and a Nano and maybe some weightlifter shoes. That would be sweet. Now, if I was a professional at this, I'd probably have a bandsaw, a bench bandsaw right here and I could just go throw this through. But today we're gonna to be using a box knife, okay? I use box knife a lot to open boxes and I got a new blade, so this shouldn't be that bad. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and sharpie this bad boy down the half so I have kind of a guiding line. Good idea there. And I'll do it on the back too, just so I can see kind of where I'm going. Okay. Now before I cut into this, this fabric here is called super fabric. In fact, when I first got this pair, I tried stabbing them with a knife and without like giving it a ton of force, I couldn't go in. So these may be a little bit difficult to cut through because this super fabric is supposed to be basically impenetrable, um, but we'll go ahead and cut through it best we can. Okay, not that bad. Actually, those laces, we can just take these bad boys out. There's nothing special about these laces. In fact, I really don't like these laces. I replaced them in these, and they're just not very good. They did update the tongue on these bad boys. As you can see, it's a thinner tongue versus this one. We'll be able to see if there's anything inside. And then we'll do this on the back. I'm sure I'm gonna get comments from people saying I'm cutting the wrong way or the wrong direction or something like that. Ok, 
okay. We're through the top half mostly. Okay, sweet. That'd be a sick looking shoe. Yeezy Air 360 Boost. Okay, now we'll go through the back right here. There we go. Man, this knife is sharp. Okay, I'm trying to do this without cutting myself. Oh, do you hear that? Cutting into something. This is honestly a testament to how tough these shoes are because I'm putting quite a bit of force on here and these are not the easiest shoes I've ever cut into. In fact, they're the only shoes I've cut into, but they, this is harder than I thought it would be. Okay, we are getting through, baby. We are getting through, okay. There we go, starting to separate. Ooh, they're breaking apart. Okay. Just got this last little bit on the heel. And this part here. Okay. We have these bad boys fully separated cut in half. Oh, this is an expensive pair of shoes to cut in half, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, these were ones that were used and weren't new. So they may be a little bit compressed, but I haven't seen these yet. I haven't opened them up yet. So we'll see them at the same time. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is a very basic construction. This is an extremely basic construction. I was expecting to see more here. So if you've ever seen any shoes that are cut open that are like boots, let's say Doc Martens, Timberlands, or uh, maybe running shoes, they're gonna have multiple layers of like rubber and you know, rubber or like low density plastic, high density plastics, high density rubbers, things like that. This is really a basic shoe. Um, here's the center of it, um, but yeah. Okay, now, so this is our basic setup here. I'm gonna cut through this more so we can kind of take a look at it, but one thing I'm already noticing is it's just this single, it's the outsole, and then there's this single layer of really high density foam, and then there's the uh, insole, and then, well, I guess this is kind of an insole, this is too, but then it attaches. So if you compress this, you can tell like there's not much give here. One that's great for squatting because you're, you know, squatting on a flat, you know, you're squatting on a, a firm surface. However, that's not very great for running. I know a lot of people use these for running. And this same foam that's in the heel is also in the toe. It's just a little bit thinner. I mean, I think these are a four to five millimeter drop. So that means it's just dropping slightly over time. Um, so it's not a perfectly flat shoe. Uh, but I would have expected a little bit more, maybe some sort of pro shock protection here uh, for those that are like doing pose method running, things like that. Um, but I'll tear these apart more and we can see maybe there's something in there that I haven't seen yet. So we'll do that now. Okay, so we have a little bit better lay of the land now that I've kind of taken this apart. There wasn't really anything surprising about what happens when I took this off. There's an extra piece of fabric underneath this. 
um, that was glued to it, very hard to get off. You know, one people say with Nobles is they're really durable. I've had these since they came out and I have used them in training, but I mostly just wear them around, but I wear them around a lot and they are super durable. And one of the reasons they're so durable is just because it's a simple built shoe. There's not a lot to really break off and go wrong. Um, <laughs> just how it is. I know my buddy Corey, who'd been using these for three, two, three years, he used them every training session and he, tr he coaches too. So, um, you know, they've lasted a long time, but basically you have your insole and then the piece that's attached to the insole. I think this is called an insole as well. Um, but really I think kind of where these get expensive for Noble maybe is the fabric. So if you want to get close here, you can see they have this super fabric on top. So this is the fabric that basically is supposedly, you know, they don't say it's impenetrable, but they use word it, verbiage that's like, this is going to last a long time. Um, and it does, it doesn't really rip. It took a little bit to cut through. Behind that layer, they then have another layer of, I don't know what this, it's some, it's a softer material, a little bit thicker, probably provide some insulation. I know these are waterproof too, uh, so that may help for the waterproof layer. They then have another layer of, uh, of well, this is used to attach the toe, which it's a little bit thicker layer, uh, and it's, like rubbery, so it's some sort of rubbery material. And then they have this bottom piece that's a little bit softer, little, feels better on the feet, things like that. So we're talking one, two, actually that's a foam piece, three, once you break that apart, four, we're talking about five layers of material and it's a pretty thin, like it feels pretty thin. So there's five different layers of fabric on the shoe. Okay, so you know that's probably one reason these are more expensive because they're doing all these different layers. And then if you go in the back on this heel counter, there's additional you know support back here too. So you have this foam piece that provides a little help for the heel, and then you have um, a plastic piece back here that provides a little bit you know stiffening, provide makes it a little bit stiffer. But overall. This is an extremely simple shoe. I mean, it's a pretty basic shoe. It's one reason they last forever. They do have holes in the back and in the, in the toe area. Um, I'm guessing that will provide a little bit compression, so allow the foam to expand. So you do have some comfort there. Um, but one reason people like squatting these so much, I mean, I see powerlifters squatting these. You know, Kevin Oak uses the high tops. Uh, one reason they're so comfortable, or one reason they last so long is because they're simple. They provide a stable platform. I know a lot of people don't like running in them, but this is kind of, you know, one thing you have to decide. Do I want something that's more comfortable and better to run in or something that's better to lift in? No Bulls basically said, hey, we'd like to make it as firm as possible. And so they did this. That's why these really aren't that comfortable and why they're pretty stiff. But these are them. These are the No Bull trainers, the most pop, some of the most popular CrossFit shoes that are out there. Um, two layers there. And, I still like them. Even after breaking them down, do I still recommend them? Definitely. I love these shoes. Like they look sweet. They last a long time. They are very simple. I'm definitely going to have to cut open a Nano so we can compare the two and see, you know, which one, if, if they're built any different or Metcon 2, see why the Metcons squeak all the time. Uh, but yeah, beautiful. Awesome. Well, this is Coop from GarageGymReviews.com. If you'd like to see another video where we do the Nanos or Metcons, make sure you subscribe so you're able to see those. But we'll see you next time. Peace.